So wow, this is uh, I w- I got pretty excited when I saw the headline here. So you're you're saying that Pelosi, it's time to for her to get the heave ho. Absolutely, it's it's past time. I mean, so there is a motion uh, to vacate the chair that's sitting out there now. One of the things Dems did, they, the Democrats did, is they actually changed the rules. So only only the the minority leader can actually bring this forward. So we're urging uh, uh, Leader McCarthy to bring it forward. But good grief, think about what she has done. And uh, I mean, and, and I don't even mention this, but she doesn't even acknowledge that there's rioting going on. This is peaceful protesting in her mind. Um, she's just she's been terrible for the country, terrible for the institution, and uh, you know it's it's time for her to vacate the chair. Well, aside from the fact that uh, you know if you are a hairstylist and you cut somebody's hair in Texas, you go to jail. Uh, Nancy Pelosi could just waltz right in. She can get her uh, hair mm-hmm. done. Uh, she can do the whole nine yards. Have the, have have the spa treatment. And again, one set of rules for the the governing Democrats, and another set of rules for all of us little people. No, that's right, Todd. I mean, think about that. It reminded me as I as I saw it. I was reminded of the former Soviet Union, where the leaders of the Politburo Bureau used to have their little cabins and resorts on lakes. They had plenty to eat. They drove cars. They had TVs because they were elitist in a non-elite society, supposedly. And that's exactly where Dems come, Democrats come in, but certainly Nancy Pelosi. I mean, this goes back to what was it uh, months ago when she had the twenty thousand dollar fridge filled with twelve dollar a pint ice cream, and and this is how I'm spending my time. And then think about what she's done to this this hair salon, this hairdresser, this single mom who has a business. She's basically tried to wipe that business out. She's basically tried to crush that business because. That owner said, look, she violated the law and nobody else gets to come in. Nobody else gets to to go back to work. But you violated the law. And uh, this elitism that's there is just obscene, quite frankly. You you mentioned something. That, oh, by the way, uh, I was just down at the Kroger over the weekend uh, getting my weekly provisions. I had a buy one, get one free on Blue Bell ice cream. It wasn't 12 bucks a pint, I'll tell you that much. But I guarantee <laughs> you it was better than whatever she was eating. <laughs> That's great. But, but you know, Congressman, um, we were in the first hour of the show, we were sort of laying out this whole story coming from the Atlantic, the narrative, the mainstream media is advancing now uh, that the president hates the military. Usually with the Democrats, it's always the exact opposite. They're guilty of what they're accusing others of. Mm. And, and a case in point, and you just brought this up, the, the cities are literally burning down. You had CNN reporters standing in front of, of burning <laughs> buildings saying, hey, nothing to see here, folks. Nice and peaceful protest. Uh, it's, it's night and day difference here. And I guess this is what happens when truth becomes irrelevant in, in, in the culture. Right. I mean, we, we really live in this, this deal where uh, uh, it's like Alice in Wonderland. Uh, some people just do not believe their own eyes. You know, don't believe your lying eyes. The fact that you see uh, a building on fire behind me doesn't mean that this isn't peaceful. Uh, that was people are coming out with uh, marshmallows on coat hangers to, to, to roast some marshmallows. That's what's going on. It's peaceful. That is what's going on here with Nancy Pelosi as well. She, she brands Republicans and people who support President Trump as domestic enemies. You are criminals in their minds. You are less than the, the dust of the earth. You are, uh, we will be tolerant only as long as you do what we say and are compliant with the, the, the liberal left. That's Nancy Pelosi. That is the left. And um, this, this notion that she, she can get out there and do what she wants to do. Um, and she's blaming everybody but herself, everybody but herself, um, and then try to crush those people who, who, who know the truth. Doesn't that sound a little bit like the former Soviet Union? It the sounds, truth is maligned. It and sounds exactly attack. like the former Soviet. It sounds exactly, exactly. like that. Yeah. And that's where, where we are. And uh, I'm just, uh, you know, uh, disturbed by it enough enough is enough america has got to stand up and the way you stand up is you got to stand up to the the totalitarians and that's the left right now 
you know, again, I keep going back, Congressman, to, to Barack Obama's administration, this promise he made on the campaign trail to fundamentally transform America. A lot of people thought that, you know, maybe he did not succeed, but I think he did. And, and I think he succeeded in transforming our academic institutions and also the Pentagon. Uh, when you look at how many, I mean, what, nearly 200 generals and high-ranking officers were fired by Obama so he could put his lackeys in the Pentagon. That's what President Trump was talking about yesterday, that while the Pentagon may be fighting him, the, the men and women out in the field, uh, the rank and file, are rock solid standing behind their commander in chief. Oh, yeah, that's exactly right. And so are the veterans. I, I mean, I went out to a, 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 a lodge last week just to, just to eat lunch there and just talk to some of the vets. I mean, they're in for Trump. They know the truth. And what you said, the Democrats always say the opposite of what, uh, what is true. So they will blame President Trump. And, and nobody in their right mind believes this. This is this is one of those things where it's like the Russian hoax dossier or something, the Steele dossier. And so it's like Alexander Vindman saying something uh, happened because he wanted it. He wanted to interpret it a certain way. That's what this is. This is this is made up whole cloth. When I was asked, I said, "Look, I don't even believe it. I don't believe a word of it. Do I believe that the Fox reporter confirmed uh, with these sources that that they said this happened? Sure." But they, but they were lying because they just make this stuff up. Because when I go talk to vets, when I talk to people who are in the military, uh, we've got a lot of them in my district, by the way. They, they support President Trump. They know what he has done for the military. And they, nobody's going to believe this, uh, this, basically this grotesque story in the Atlantic. No, but there's something else going. You know, there's something else going on here. It's part of a puzzle, and I don't know if we've got all the pieces, but it seems to me that the Democrats are laying the foundation to try and and stage another another power grab, another coup. And if they can if they can convince the media and Hollywood and these military leaders that the election is going to be the election results are illegitimate, or maybe the fix is in. That's what concerns me. I mean, look, I, I'm still, I was one of these guys, Congressman, Trump's going to win in a landslide. But now you kind of wonder what exactly are they plotting here and how successful are they going to be? No, that's a fair statement. I, I mean, I called what they did last time was a coup attempt uh, for sure. And uh, what you're seeing here with, with the complicity of the, uh, of the media is the left elites are really trying to sabotage this election. So they want the all mail in ballots. And when you start talking about potential fraud and everything like that, they, they just deny it. They say it's not true. That's voter fraud. But then you also have the ability to, to, to fiddle with uh, elections machines. That's elections fraud. These are the things that, that this president is fighting because I, uh, you can't go virtually anywhere, um, certainly in rural America or middle America, without seeing a lot of Trump. And then you mentioned Sacramento. Um, they also had a boat a rally with, what, 7,000 boats or whatever it was on it. There is a groundswell of support for this president and for freedom. That's what's going on. But we are going to be facing, again, I remind you of what former Soviet Union tactics, um, where they're, they're going to try to take this, this election. I, I am really concerned about that.